I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm, I'm excited about them. Did the strobes like ruin some of them? I figured it would actually kind of cool. It's cool, but it happens so quick like, since it's literally like one one thousand yeah. second. It happens so fast. So like, I was really worried that it would either be like all white, like some of the things are all white. Yeah. Because I couldn't like expose for it, or either like all black. I Because like I missed it. it. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> Hi Zane. Hi. Is this good? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. <sighs> How's your day been? My day has been pretty good. I went to the eye doctor to get my uh, eyes. I, I went to go get like a new prescription, basically. Mm -hmm. The beginning of the year, I got an eye, I, I got a prescription, and then I ordered two pairs of glasses online. Mm -hmm. And the ones I'm wearing now were like originally my secondaries because I like the other ones more. Mm -hmm. But I always had these crazy headaches. Ugh. And th and then I I noticed that like these glasses the prescription looks slightly different and i'm yeah. like oh no <laughs> yeah i've never had to do like any eye things like yeah. i've, I've always, had, always good had good vision. vision and but like everyone in my family kind of started with like good vision and then yeah. and then um had to get glasses i feel like you. my sister just had to get night glasses and now she she wears glasses all the time so I like, feel like it's going to happen to me and I don't know what to expect because like... <laughs> yeah, I remember my uh, my parents wound up having to like wear reading glasses uh, maybe like five or so years ago, but now they kind of just wear them all day long and my mom keeps... She, she was complaining a little bit like, oh, I can I can see my glasses in my field of vision all times. I can't like, it's so distracting. And I'm like, man, I've been doing this since I was seven. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you're like you don't even know. You don't even know, bro. It's, it's, you're, you're going to be fine. You're going you're to be. Plus it's like, it just seems like such an issue. Like with when you're saying like your glasses probably had a slightly wrong prescription. Yeah. Well, so they I, were giving you headaches. Like that's crazy. Well, I wound up taking uh, both pairs into like an actual like in person eye doctor place and i'm like do you have a machine where you can somehow see if these are the right prescription which sounded imaginary to me yeah yeah turns out the lady just go she just went over to this like thing like it wasn't even complicated like mm -hmm. she was able to and sure enough like the ones i was wearing for the first half of the year were like wrong right so yeah I, so i was literally like Not like literally just like fucks with you yeah even if it like felt okay you know well, like vision wise well i it kind of did but like i think <laughs> <laughs> it's just like slightly off you know like it, yeah, they were circular, so at first I thought that, like, the world had, like, a fisheye lens and it was kind of bulbous because of the edges around it. I'm like, maybe it's just the way this stuff... But no, like, they were just wrong. Uh, so I think I, like, fucked up my eyes. That's, like, that's how I feel when people have Christmas lights in their house. All the time? Well, just not all the time, but certain Christmas lights, I see the flicker. Mm. And it's so subtle. Yeah. And it's just, like, enough to throw me off. And it, like... I like literally my motion blur is like incorrect when it happens. Like it's, I like look at my hands. Like I like look at my yeah. I like look at my hands and I'm like, what is happening right now? Like what is causing this? Like your brain has a different shutter speed. I think so. <laughs> literally, just for cert. Well, for certain, my shutter speed doesn't match certain Christmas lights. I uh, see what I'm saying. At my old house, we had these Christmas lights where like the fixtures that they were in were like patterned. Yeah. And when you shook them around, it looked like a different frame rate of life. That's crazy. Yeah. For, uh, it's for, cool. for anyone listening to this who isn't like a camera nerd, basically like f <laughs> footage is shot in a certain number of like pictures per second. But when, it, when it's higher, it looks more like reality TV. And then like, and then sometimes it looks like just weird and fake. And you, you can just tell like it's just, just a different look. So, like, I was shaking these Christmas lights, and it was like reality was changing. Like, yes, they just looked, yeah, that's they like just... how I felt in Caitlin's room. Yeah. Well, that one time we went to LA. Oh, yeah, that one shout time. Shout out, Caitlin. Yeah, shout out, 100 Gex. <laughs> oh, my God, the best. Yeah, we, we greyhounded to LA to see 100 Gex, and it was well worth it. That is so worth it. That was the funnest concert ever. It was really I good. So much. I have not looked up who the opener was yet because oh, yeah. I didn't know her name, but she was really she good. She was good, too. She had some crazy like LED light show going on behind her. It was like a lion or so, some magical Wait, creature. I don't remember this. <laughs> I have no recollection, like no recollection. <laughs> she had a crazy, I mean, it wasn't like, it wasn't like. There was like, nothing behind her. No, there was. Was there really? I have a phone video, but. I, Holy shit. I don't remember this at all. I don't remember there being like a screen behind her or anything. Well, we were drunk. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. 
I have to see this. Oh my god, she did. Yeah. Do you not remember that? Oh my god. But Hundred Gex didn't have anything. Or yeah. Ironically, they had less going on. They had le- yeah. For how chaotic their album is. A thousand. <laughs> That's all you need. You a- just need the music. You don't need anything else going on. A thousand Gex by a hundred Gex. Shout out. Shout out. <laughs> yeah. You've been listening to Body Meat lately. Lately. Oh, always. <laughs> Lately. Um, yeah, I started listening to them like a while ago. I still haven't heard what they are. I don't know what they are yet. I think it's just one guy. Oh. But I could be wrong. Someone correct me. Yeah. Leave, it, leave a correction in the comments. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's just one guy and I love him. Oh, okay. So. <laughs> he makes me feel chaotic. What does it sound like? Like just a bunch of different shit. Okay. It's like it changes up. Like, his flow changes up and the rhythms change up, which mm-hmm. I really enjoy. Um, you know, yeah. I was, you know I, was th- I was thinking about, um, we're kind of getting to this point with the internet right now where there's, like, all these different things that have, like, quote-unquote made it in the sense that, like, there are artists that are sustaining their lives off being an artist and they tour and they have a fan base and they're, like, liked worldwide. Mm-hmm. Internet people. But, Just kidding. But, <laughs> no, but, let, <laughs> like... Kidding. But nobody knows what any of them are. Okay, I feel you. Like, so like, so like body meat. Well, I'm saying or like, like someone bigger. Anybody. Anybody. Well, that is that like the data thing that we were kind of talking about. May I don't before. know specifically, but what, what what I'm getting at is like I feel like before there was kind of a general thing where like the mainstream stuff is what everybody listened to, mm-hmm. and then there was like a bit of fringe things that people liked Mm -hmm. but now even the fringe things are like really successful because of the internet like for instance you you could have like sixty seven thousand views on a video yeah and before that might be one of the biggest videos on youtube ever and now you could be like a complete nobody technically but you still have a fan base and you're still like operating your entire life off. yes no this is so true yeah this is happening now yeah um my theory is like Spotify playlists are bringing back the one-hit wonder. Mm. Because a little bit. Because like things will like you know let's bring up the pollen playlist. The pollen playlist. Can you get uh, a little bit closer to the mic? Yes. I uh, I think I, I think you're fine, but this is like the second time I've done this. So I <laughs> <laughs> and I Shout want... out Zane Barry and his podcast. <laughs> the last one I did was Sadia. She like kept like drifting away, <laughs> but she's really loud, so the levels are good. So I didn't question it, but now I realize. But I'm quieter. The okay. whole the whole first episode is gonna sound like an echo. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but no, the pollen playlist. The pollen playlist, like it's you know, yeah. like if you're on that playlist, like your song is gonna pop off, yeah. like view wise or stream wise, <laughs> view wise, um, <laughs> it's gonna pop off and it's gonna do have like a ton of streams, yeah. Which might get you if like if you're in any playlist with at least ten thousand subscribers, right. Though, like then you wind up totally your numbers, but no, I, I, I like with with pollen, like what? How did it start? Was it more indie feeling? I, well, the the catchphrase of it is it's genreless. Oh. So I don't know. <laughs> so it's just kind of like, hey, there's some good shit. And it in just seems it really just seems like a, you know like a take on like just a good like top, almost like a top 100, but not top 100. Obviously, they were like following that like yeah because they knew people would go to a playlist to listen to it. Well, I, I think in like middle school and high school, I identified as like kind of an indie alternative type kid that was into like Passion Pit and the White Stripes and Arctic Monkeys and yeah, all these things. And same. every and and then like every now and again, like one of them would get really big, like the Arctic Monkeys or eventually the Black Keys or Childish mm-hmm. Gambino, you mm-hmm. know. But being into those things, like kind of like I was just saying, like they would have like national to globally big fan bases and tour and be like relevant within that genre but then if you tried to go talk to somebody about it like people wouldn't know what you're talking about right okay but i know what you're saying and i feel like pollen kind of started as like the late 2010s version of that where they were like hey we're gonna have like things that appeal to tyler the creator fans like injury reserve or brockhampton or or uh zach we i can't i don't ever remember his last name you know what i'm talking about though i don't know if i do who's who's the, that? he has that song called my blue wait no that's amber that's Fuck. literally amber no no right? he just has a song called blue i'm all over the place <laughs> that is so funny okay. i don't know how does it go i'm i'm going on a tangent and i'm losing my original Are we gonna points sing it? <laughs> no 
Should I pull it up? I don't know what song it is. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I have, it I was just an exa- Okay, this is what it's about now. Okay, one second. No, it's called good. Blue. I think yeah, but I feel like it's spelled weird too. That's why I especially didn't. Like but his it. name is Zach. It, it, his last name starts with like a V or a W or something kind of st- questionable. Zach. Not Villa? questionable. I sometimes I say adjectives. They're not accurate. Zach Williams. <laughs> oh. Zach Williams. No. No, his last name is like a word I can't say. That's why. <laughs> that's why this is impossible. With <laughs> Anybody? There's somebody listening. Is that Zach Witness? Oh, Zach V. How would you say this? How do you? What is it? Valer? Valer? Oh, it's with a K. I was spelling it with a. Yeah, and his main song is titled Blue with two O's. I don't know the song. Oh, I do know the song. Yeah, see, you I do immediately know, I know, know. The song. And that's why I said, you know? <laughs> yeah. But, okay, so that's like what I'm getting at. Like things of that realm i think is what that pollen playlist started as yeah but now even those things are like mainstream and like remember when the spotify rewind happened and it was a bunch of people getting indie rap and they like or or no pop rap pop rap yeah and they thought they were indie yes yes i totally i got that yeah (laughs) shout out me um but yeah it's crazy though because it is like like this i know this song Yes. by him but i don't know any other songs by him no i don't know anything so that's like the, it's like singles i guess yeah well you were saying Making singles like really yeah popular. yeah you were saying way back when that you think pollen is like creating a the one hit one wonders. hit wonder yeah yeah i it, i think like in video and music there's kind of like a very palpable sense of like everybody feels like they're in on a secret that the internet is the new frontier so they're all kind of like chasing whatever's popular at the moment yeah or, or at least an advertising strategy or a method of making a lot of stuff in a short period of time to kind of get their stuff out so that they can capitalize on it before like the market is overwhelmed yeah even though it already is yeah so then you have a bunch of people that'll have like an extremely like hot summer but, and then just like fade yeah i mean then or, their next goal is like having another big summer but it's not even like guaranteed to happen and then it's like oh are you gonna even have a career right no totally because i think some of these some of these people like on here maybe have like never even like played concerts and stuff before and just like yeah. have a ton of listeners because like they make you know i guess bedroom pop do, do you know who ybn corday is uh-uh. He's a rapper, and basically, like he he's like one of the newest young kids to be being celebrated for being like lyrical and old school in that sense. Okay. And he was um, there were these two other rappers that start with YBN, and they're like an unofficial group, kind of. Not not even the way ASAP is because they're like a pretty official group, but like they all just take that on the gotcha. front of their name, and okay. then they eventually did a mixtape together. When he had his like first really big song or whatever it was mostly because the other two guys who were already like popping played it on their story Mm -hmm. and then corday they wound up like bringing him out or something to do his first concert ever yeah but instead of it being like a dive bar or like somebody's living room it's like thousands of people yeah that's crazy it's really it's really weird but i guess that's cool i mean no i mean it is i just I think about how sometimes people get very hung up over the term industry plant. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I don't know. Is that even real? Because (laughs) there's so many people starting at this enormous, like, head start. Right. Just because of who they know. But then, like, a lot of them are extremely good. Yeah. And hardworking. So then it's like, well, what really matters? And I think people just kind of are like addicted to that like underdog storyline where they have to like practice in a garage and then like work their way up over years because i think even like brockhampton like i think i was talking to rain about it or something and she said that like so this might not be true (laughs) putting it on her we're gonna put out fake news (laughs) so she said that like they were probably like working for a really long time before they actually like blew up with saturation oh they yeah no right like and like no one knows about that they just think like this is banned just like all of a sudden blew up Kevin Abstract and Amir and I think Don McLennan had a band camp project under a different rap group name and it was like all like dramatic and then I, I think they got rid of it. Right. And there's even like a Injury Reserve mixtape before live at the dentist's office that like you would have to like go torrent 
I, th- I think it's called like the the colors tape or something like mm-hmm. that. Cooler colors. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, no, like there's. Uh, I remember even like Lil Yachty. He was doing an interview with a uh, Joji, mm-hmm. and he was just saying like, yeah, there's no real such thing as overnight success. Yeah. And he was like, we kind of make it look like it. Uh, is no work but it's a lot of work and he was just kind of talking about how like people kind of act like he hasn't like put in that the work much, but like including yeah. his like own friends but i guess maybe some of these some of the, the like playlist people maybe that is really happening like the overnights yeah i don't really know how happening. the fuck dominic fike is a thing where He's, did he come yeah, from? yeah where did he come from I looked all up- of a sudden he was like i like because like okay so i used to drive a lot for my job oh and the, the like rental car that they gave me like had xm yeah so like and i used to drive like this the production designer yeah. so like we listened to radio okay i wasn't just gonna play my stuff <laughs> right off the bat and um if we listened to all nation like his songs would come up and that's like yeah huge i know who dominic fike is because brock hampton uploaded a video called this is dominic fike and I was, and then it was like his, but then it was like a music video of his like big song. Mm-hmm. And the three night song. Yeah. Yeah. That one. And I thought, I thought that was them like announcing this is the new member. So there was probably at least thousands of thousands of people that had that same assumption as me and went and followed it and just thought that song was really catchy. Yeah. But outside of that, like he's, he's kind of everywhere right now. Yeah. And he's on, he's on uh, Kevin Abstract's album for yeah. Peach, right? He, um, he makes, he makes your life feel like a car commercial happy like like you're like a happy family but in a car commercial okay i see it yeah <laughs> these are the jokes is, is he a like for <laughs> like is it that kind Don't, of I'm uh, like I'm cutting this out. <laughs> leave, leave their name out. <laughs> there's just gonna be a hard cut and people are gonna wonder why <laughs> it's black mirror god damn it <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's uh that's the music industry, right? I don't really know shit about it. I don't but know anything. I'm just talking. I don't know anything either, but <laughs> what's what's but Spotify uh, what's, playlist seem to Let's end every subject with we don't know anything. We actually don't know shit about this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What else don't we know shit about? Astronomy. Oh yeah. Well that that is a thing that we really don't know anything about. Yeah, we've discussed that. What are especially, you? Especially especially Zane. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Aquaquarius. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know that I'm a cancer, and I don't know anything about anybody else's anything. I assume that Scorpios are mean because it sounds like scorpion, and that is my best guess. Um, there is a Instagram filter right now yeah. that will like you like click you tap to change like what sign you are, and then it gives like the top three traits. Mm-hmm. And I'm a Sagittarius, and my top three traits were tra- like traveler insensitive <laughs> and ambitious and i was like holy shit like insensitive like i'm attacked you're a pretty sensitive person i might be a little insensitive i feel like i'm a little blunt sometimes mm. so okay do, do you like astronomy or do you think it's like kind of bullshit or are you somewhere in the middle i'm somewhere in the middle yeah like sometimes i think it's fun to like well okay so what i do love i love like the instagram accounts that like like give you a scenario and how each like sign will respond you yeah. know like really quickly like yeah, a little bit cool. like um like what the what would the signs do at the beach and it's like Sagittarius like and it's like one oh, word answers like I love those that's basically like the meme form the meme I love the meme form yeah I uh, have, yeah. <laughs> have you noticed that like memes lately have been like somebody comes up with something like that and then everybody loves it and then everybody hates it because everybody and and then it just turns into hate every single time <laughs> So, like, every meme ever? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> every single meme. You're describing every meme ever. Well, people were doing that Zodiac one all the time. Yeah. Yeah. That's, like, a f- I feel like I've seen that since, like, early Tumblr days where... Because it allows somebody yes. to pop off, like, 12 jokes at once. That's yes. really that's really the reason for the, for the astronomy. But they're, they're also just, like, the best. <laughs> yeah, no. That, that's the thing. When people get mad, I'm like, just be quiet. There's, there, there's, they're just there, funny. One of these has made you laugh at one point, probably. And if not, fine. Yeah. <laughs> Like, I was reading one the other day, and it was like, what would your offering be to the gods? Mm. And, like, Olives was, like, half a weed cookie. <laughs> and then mine was, like, a subscription to my semi- semi-spiritual podcast. Like, and it's, like, just stupid. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny. I, uh, 
I used to be like extremely skeptic of them. Mm-hmm. I've I've always been somebody that gets like interested by things, but like my brain just has to go to logic first to understand things. Mm-hmm. So like with astronomy and like seeing everybody get super excited about them when I was like 15 or whatever, like I wanted to understand, but then I feel like every single person I ever approached in that community like asking about the science of it, they would just get kind of upset at me. <laughs> And they just be like, you don't get it? Yeah, yeah, kind of. But then that's where I was just like, well, wait, why? You know, because, like, I didn't grow up religious. So at that point, I was like, How, is this just religion? Is this just people just... Oh, interesting. Yeah, like, it's kind of a religion. And in terms of, like, having faith in it and just being okay with, like, not explaining it, you know? Yeah. But the thing <laughs> is, is, like, I found it to be more explainable now. And I wish somebody had presented it to me the way I've, like, found it the more... It, because... I, I remember uh, there's this like magician guy named the amazing Kreskin, but he's like super anti tricking the public. So he starts all of his shows by saying everything you're about to see is an illusion and like I'm doing it. Okay. <laughs> so he basically, uh, so he gets mad at people pretending magic is real and mm-hmm. he's like an amazing magician. Mm-hmm. And I don't remember if he was just citing a study or if he did it himself, but essentially like he had a, room of let's say like 20 to 50 people something like that and they were all given a horoscope and then they were like raise your hand if you agree with this at a level of one from one to ten now two now three now four and essentially nobody rose their hands except for the nine and ten range so everybody was like holy shit my horoscope is perfect okay and then they were like pass it to your neighbor on the left and everybody was still nine and ten. Oh shit so they, he kind of went on to make the argument that it's like malarkey and not based on anything yeah. and everything's all broad and... Super general. Yeah, and I kind of ran with that opinion on it for a while, but I couldn't help but feel like every single cancer thing I ever read was like extraordinarily accurate. <laughs> yeah, you like find a way to relate it to your life. Yeah, you know? and I always kind of was stuck on that, but recently I had the thought that these are supposed to be like soul defining things. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes we cut people short and just look at them as like kind of one dimensional. But in general, people kind of experience the full spectrum of emotions Mm -hmm. and the full spectrum of experience. Like there's a lot more things that we have in common than I think we assume we do. Mm -hmm. So I think that it makes sense that people could find something that they agree with in every horoscope or in every sign. Yeah. But the idea that the one that they are is, like, their main thing, and that's kind of where, like, everything in their, like, decision-making and emotional feelings, like, roots from, you know? Yeah. That kind of made sense to me. Yeah. Because I'm like, that's what this is supposed to be, you know? So you have CoStar now? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, I have CoStar. That's what I'm getting (laughs) at. Do you actually? Yeah, I do. Okay, should we read our what our daily thing is right now? I have it deleted off my phone <laughs> to save space, but when, I'm gonna see what mine is right now. But when somebody's like, "Oh my god, what's your sign?" I'm able to log you're, in. Yeah, you're yeah, yeah. Like, I'm able to be like, "Here's my Mars," <laughs> but I don't really know what any of that. St- <laughs> my moon is this, and my rising is this. Yeah, I don't really know what any of that stuff means, but I've had people explain it to me, and from there, it's. Like, they, they went down my chart and explained every single one, and the whole thing was like, man. See, I, I couldn't do that. Like, I'm not invested enough to be, like... I like, just... I don't... It's crazy how people can be like, okay, this is you because of this, this, this. Like, I can't do that. Well, I mean, I didn't do the Googling myself. I had somebody else. <laughs> but you're saying someone, like, read you your chart, yeah, basically? Like, yeah. they were like, well, you're I, this, like this way because your moon is this. I know a lot of NAU students. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, of, see, I know what you mean. Of, yeah, I, of, I got what you're putting down. A lot of spiritual people. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, like like Sadia, for instance, she does like tarot card readings. And that that was another thing where I, I, I was going into that with, I think, with the newfound appreciation for astronomy. Yeah. And it was another thing where I'm like, I don't know how this is going to make any sense. But then it was like a really insightful reading. Yeah. And there's a lot of uh, evidence that the placebo effect like totally works and is like legit that where if you just believe in something, you kind of see results. So I 100% fuck it. tarot cards. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, one time I almost got mine read, but like I had a lot of like important things coming up. Mm-hmm. So I was like, this is too much for me right now. I'm not going to do it right now. I feel like that's when people do it the most. I know. But I was like, if I get a bad reading, like I just didn't want that. I just didn't. I didn't want that energy. Yeah. But I probably should have done it. Maybe it would have prevented me from something. Yeah. 
what was the what was the situation we're not gonna talk about it we yeah, can't I talk about I it didn't think so. <laughs> i didn't want to ask but that was like my default here i'm just gonna fix that is that better probably i don't really That's know why my, my it's probably extremely calling. loud right now because i'm talking or fucking what's it <laughs> we can so switch much. to asmr if you want This is a five gum. <laughs> this is how five gum feels. We're not wearing headphones, so we don't know how awful this is. This is that's gonna be insane. <laughs> how was Christmas? Christmas was good. I was down in Tucson, and it was great. What do you? It was relaxing. Okay, you are a Tucson person. What, yeah. what do you like about Tucson? Because people, Tucson. people everywhere else in Arizona makes fun of it. Yeah, <laughs> I don't, it's like fucked up with them. They've never even been there. Maybe. Maybe think, they have. <laughs> I think part of the joke is because they've never been from there. <laughs> they just make fun of it. Um, well, I feel like a lot of people have different experiences with Tucson. Like, I've had some people that, that I know that just like went to U of A. And mm-hmm. that's their only experience of Tucson, which is like way different because that's like downtown. And U of A is like super f- like frat life. Yeah. Which is like, mm, no. ASU not, is not too, though. A- ASU is not as much of as U of A. You know, what? I take actually. that back. I take that back. If you okay, so if you with ASU, if you look at the numbers, it'll like point to being a party school and a frat school. But then if you look at like the area and like what's going on, like it's fine. And I think it's actually like I feel like that's just like an old s- statistic. Yeah. You know, like it used to be that way. Yeah, I. I but remember- like almost there's no frat row here and stuff. Like in U of A, there's like frat row mm-hmm. where there's like frat houses and like those always look shit going down those always looked like fake <laughs> <laughs> i know it's like insane i actually like toured a university of maryland when i like first oh. was looking at colleges because my sister's out in dc yeah and that one had like an actual frat row like with like you know like the classic like brick yeah pillar houses with, with like pedestals and yes literally and... and it was like in a in a cult a beautiful like it had a beautiful lawn and it was all in a cul-de-sac and it had like huge <laughs> greek letters and, oh, and i was like weird. i was like what the fuck is happening here yeah that's kind of some pleasantville black mirror yeah cult bullshit i don't want to be a part of but U of A's isn't like that you know like that intense but it's uh definitely in the middle where they have like this whole this whole group of houses and stuff and it's more intense yeah um what made you to decide asu over maryland Oh, money. money. Yeah, <laughs> No yeah. one has that much money. <laughs> you know why ASU has 70,000 students? <laughs> it's expensive, but not that expensive. Yeah, but no. it's still pretty fucking expensive. Yeah, I needed that in-state. Make college cheaper. Literally, please. Yeah. Um, forgive my student loans. <laughs> For, forgive them, please. Please forgive my student loans. Forgive our student loans. Um... <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I'm really happy I went to ASU. But Tucson, back to Tucson. Yeah. So, like, some people's experiences are that Tucson, which is not my experience. That's because not obviously, my Tucson, yeah. That's not my Tucson. Um, because I, like, grew up next to this, like, national park called Sabino Canyon, and it was, like, really crazy. Like, I'd run in the mountains, like, every morning, and, like, it was just really a really beautiful experience, and I was really lucky. Mm-hmm. And, like... Like, when I think of Tucson, like, I just think of a lot of nature. Yeah. Because, like, that's where I grew up. Like, there were always, like, bobcats walking around and javelinas and, like, crazy wildlife. And then, like, my dad had, like, a really beautiful garden. Mm-hmm. That's, like, insane. So I always just think of that, I think, when I think of Tucson. My, my parents' place down in South Phoenix was built in the 30s, so we have, like, two acres of land. Mm-hmm. So, so like, we, we did a little bit of gardening growing up. I, I, I didn't contribute that much because I, I didn't know things. Yeah. <laughs> but I remember, like, I'm really glad that I had a sense of nature in the sense that I had, like, land and grass and things like that to, like, interact with. Yeah. But, like, there, was, there wasn't anything, like, really outside of our house in terms of like a place to go Mm. so even like tempe being the city dense city it is i'm like wow nature (laughs) because i can actually go like walk down a sidewalk and like see things so yeah i'm really jealous of like what what you got to grow up with because i feel like i would go outside a lot yeah it definitely wasn't like there wasn't so like the thing that i used to walk to was the circle k Mm. and i used to get thirst busters like that's what me and my friends used to do 
there wasn't really like <laughs> it's not like it was like here you know where there'd be like stores and stuff i guess i feel but like, like on one side there was like the national park and then on the other side there was like the circle k yeah and like the one restaurant and like the mountain <laughs> oh so were you kind of in like a small town like, it wasn't area? no it like, everything was, like, really close within driving distance. Okay, I feel But you. not, like, walking distance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, when I think of Phoenix, I think of concrete. And when I think of Tucson, I think of, like, actual nature. When, I, when we were growing up in Phoenix, before they um, got rid of, like, a lot of the original, like, Phoenix stuff, like, the old, like, baseline flower uh, fields and... Uh, Thing, things like that mm-hmm. like they, they, they wound up they wound up busy building a bunch of plazas before then like we we had to drive like half an hour to go to target <laughs> yeah that's crazy we, we had it we had a next to our house and i think it's still there possibly the i shouldn't say that that's identifiable the, <laughs> How many uh, are there <laughs> i'm gonna cut that out the um the plazas like here in arizona are like my favorite because like, like the strip malls where it's like yeah, here's a petco it's so chipotle random. It's zoyo so random <laughs> And I, I think, like, some of them are starting to get, like, like starting to close and stuff, which makes me sad. Mm-hmm. Because there's, some like, some really little shops in them, I feel like. But, um... Wait, yeah. what, what kind of plazas do you mean? Like, do you mean, like, actual original businesses or, like, Taco Bell? What, what do you mean? I guess... Well, I guess, like, when I was growing up, you know, like, you'd, you'd go to the plaza and there'd be, like... Like, one that I went to a lot had, like, a bookman's, mm-hmm. like, this random furniture store. Yeah. And, like, not a Beyond Bread. Well, in... in, in so, te- I guess those aren't closing, but in, you know what I mean. In Tempe, there was Changing Hands Bookstore, and then that was next door to a Hoodlum's Record Store. Mm-hmm. And Hoodlum's wound up closing down, and now I assume it's, like... I don't know, some restaurant or something like that. Yeah. That was, like, a place where you could actually, like, go after school and see, like, other kids that maybe normally you wouldn't see anywhere else and be like, hey, music. And they they, they still had the thing where there were, like, headphones on posts where you could, like, check out an album there and stuff. And Yeah. I, uh... So, sometimes when I'm in record stores, I feel like a little bit, like, I'm pretending just because sometimes, like, when I'm rifling through, I can feel myself maybe not caring a ton. Y- yeah. You know, because it's, like overwhelming but like there, there are a lot of times where i go and it's just really nice to just go like look at stuff yeah you know yeah totally um yeah i used to i used to hang out at park place mall a lot when i was like i don't did you ever go no. to malls you never went to malls i i kind of hate like, i grew up with arizona mills oof see i to me i, I, li- I like arizona mills like because i like harkins yeah. So I have like that that's the, association that, with that, it. But. That's my main association with Arizona Mills is going to Harkins and I love Harkins. Yeah. Harkins should sponsor me for how much I how much business I give them just telling people to go there instead of AMC. Absolutely. Love Harkins. <laughs> but the white cheddar popcorn. Going to school in Tempe, like a lot of kids would just say that it was like the ghetto mall, which was annoying to me. Yeah. Because like I I don't know, it's just because I lived in an area that was like predominantly like Hispanic and black and stuff, and yeah. like Tempe sometimes that's can, fucked up. Yeah, Tempe can span like really like white and like sometimes and even like Asian in certain areas. So like I assume they were so like kids in middle school they they were all going to like Chandler Mall, and I hate it there. Like it like it's it's it's, it's it, the bougie mall. It's cl- yeah, it's clearly a better mall, but the vibe I get when I'm there, like I feel I feel not good inside. Or you know what? I think maybe Olive took me there once. Where is that? Where is Chandler Mall? I don't know if I've ever been. I don't know. They have the Apple, <laughs> they have the Apple store, though. They have the so that's, Apple that's store. That's where you have there's, to go. There's one, actually, the two, the, the like, fancy mall in Tucson is called Long Cantata. Mm-hmm. And they have, like, an AJ's and the Apple store. They have, like, a Louis Vuitton store. With the, Apple, with the Apple store, you know how, like, Apple's kind of doing this, like, world domination thing? Yeah. You ever think about how, like, it's even a bigger flex that there's not that many Apple stores? Because they're basically saying, no, we're going to make you drive a long distance. Yeah. And you have to come here. Not there's, Verizon, not anywhere else, but you have to come here. And there's only going to be one for every 50 miles. Literally. They really did that. That's the only Apple store in in Tucson mm-hmm. that I can think of. There's only one here, too. I mean, there's probably more, but like... <laughs> but they're, when they're I'm actually clo- thinking not, about it... They're not close. I think that's the... Like, when I think about the Tucson Apple store, I think that is the only one in Tucson. And it's been that way for like, how, like 10 years. Yeah, probably. That's crazy, like, that they haven't built more. Besides, I know now they sell the products at, like, Verizon. 
and like in like the ASU bookstore, like you know, in like college yeah. I mean, you stuff, you can, but, but like if you have like an issue, like you have to get yeah. something fixed, or yeah. like there's some genius question you gotta ask, then you gotta go there. Yeah. I, I was at the Apple store in Portland because I forgot to pack a charger and they sold me like a pretty short cable for $20 mm-hmm. and then I realized I needed a block and I was mm-hmm. just like, oh, let me just get one of those here because normally they're like $1 and like a bargain bin like while you're in self-checkout. Yeah. You know, like there's just like a big thing of those blocks and I was like, how much are these? And he was like, $20. Yeah. And I, and I, I laughed. You just like, like it was just my re- reaction to I laugh. Know. And he did not have a sense of humor about it at all. He was just like, so are you buying it? <laughs> and I'm like, no, man. I'm not. Literally, I I was like, one time I had to buy a new MacBook charger. Yeah. And that was like one of the things that I didn't really want to buy from like a different place than the Apple store. And they're mm. so they're like literally 70 bucks. And I was like, that's ridiculous. Yeah. That... The if you have to get a new pair of Joy Cons on your Switch, those are like seventy dollars. Yeah, it's crazy. What's crazy though is that they they they're so known for breaking that you can send them into Nintendo and get them fixed for free. There you go. Yeah. All your listeners know now. <laughs> if you if you bought new Joy Cons <laughs> because yours were broken, you get, fucked up. <laughs> get another pair. Play with some friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Apple Store is a. Uh, is weird but really aesthetic my brother wouldn't go in when we were young because it like gave him cult vibes whoa <laughs> yeah he was like i'll wait outside it's creepy in there and i'm like i get it <laughs> but also i want to touch all the screens it's so minimal though all right here's my new here's my new streaming idea okay so you go to the apple store mm-hmm. and you create a new desktop mm-hmm. and you open spotify mm-hmm. and, and then you play your own song on re- repeat mm-hmm. but inside of a playlist as well in case repeat gets turned off mm-hmm. where it's just 50 of your song <laughs> and then you go back to desktop one so people can't even see that spotify's even open uh-huh. then you're in the pollen playlist you're in the pollen playlist you're popping off you're getting you're getting royalties yeah yeah, and you just do that at every Apple store every day. <laughs> there was uh, one time I did that at the... <laughs> I said it was at the B&H store, and I just like yeah. pulled up my website on like every single yeah. desktop computer they had there, and I was like, why did I do that? I, I've, I, I, I've, probably, I've probably pulled up my website on... No, you know, no, it was like an old... I was visiting an old teacher, and like I pulled up my website. Like, like on the school computers? No, just on her person. Yeah, because like I, because I, I emailed it to her a bunch of times, and she never responded, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> you made me just think about computer labs at my old high school now. Yeah. I did like a web design uh, class my freshman year of high school, and mm-hmm. I actually loved it. Was it, have, would, was it having you code? Yeah, like super basic. Mm-hmm. You know, that was that was like 2012. Do you know what coding <laughs> language it was? Mm. Just code? Because I don't even know. I don't I'm know. trying to remember. Um, gosh, I don't remember. Like CSS or Java. Or oh, like you know, I think it was CSS. Yeah. Yeah, it was fun. I, I took, um, have you heard of Code Academy? Mm-mm. There's, um, Code Academy is one of these many things where it's like this online module to teach you something and it's like super, it's almost like if you were taking like an ASU online class and it had like a module type yeah. of it. It's like, it's kind of like that. So basically Code Academy is like where anybody in the world can learn how to code for free, basically by just taking this module on this website. And I was doing it for a while and I, I just kind of stopped after two weeks. And that- <laughs> <laughs> really getting up with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I would... I really enjoyed it. Like, I really enjoyed taking a class on it when I was 15. So yeah. maybe I should think about it again. Because, like, I would also, I would like to, like, upgrade my website in that way. Yeah. I, I use uh, Squarespace and then... I, yeah, Squ- I use... Squarespace. <laughs> sponsor me. You sponsor a lot of podcasts. Squarespace. Why can't this, I be this, one uh, of This podcast is sponsored by Squarespace. Yes. I use Squarespace exclusively, and I go, <laughs> I go on, I go online, and um, some people have like self-built like because you can insert CSS into Squarespace, yeah, and, yeah. and some people have like their own builds online where you can just like open source like copy them and yeah 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 yeah, yeah I know what you mean yeah I always thought coding would be a cool skill to have, but I really like learning. Okay. Yeah. I'm here. I don't even remember Hold what we were talking. I don't even remember what we were talking. I I had to I had to stop the recording because the computer was having an issue. He had to 
talk to his sponsors. We need to get some shit together. Oh, yeah, we were talking about code. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Squarespace, yeah. Squarespace, back from the break. I should just put a fake Squarespace ad you there should. to hide the code. When I just did a, did a podcast with Nick Johnson. Oh. Shout out. Nothing with Nick Johnson. Shout out. We love um, it. And we were like, we need to get you sponsors. Like, <laughs> and I think he should be sponsored by this one energy drink called Bang. Bang, yeah, Nick likes bang. Bang, um, bang energy drink kind of scares me. It scares me so much. It has it, like creatine in it and like amino acids and like crazy shit. It's scary. Bang, bang. Okay, here's. Bang. Okay, we're still good. Bang. Bang. <laughs> bang. Bang scares me because when I was a youth and people started drinking like monster energies mm-hmm. in middle school, even that was too much for me. <laughs> like I was intimidated by monsters, yeah. and then and then kids started drinking like Rockstar. <laughs> Rockstar, oh my god! And I was like, "What is that?" I haven't I haven't seen a Rockstar in like forever, actually. Side note. Yeah, so that's the thing. <laughs> and then people started drinking Nas. Nas. <laughs> and I and, remember Nas. And somehow, as the years went by, people are now drinking a substance called Bang, <laughs> and it's Bang. so intimidating of a name that I just can't. <laughs> I know it's insane i like saw it and i was like dude what is this and i was like reading about it and he was like yeah it's actually kind of insane when you see those cans and they say something like no sugar or no caffeine i'm like what is in that there? one has hella caffeine in what it, is in it <laughs> i know literally i was like what is this like rat juice like straight up like, rat juice i don't know <laughs> it's insane he was he was zooted he um he was zooted he um drank one of those which has like more caffeine than two cups of coffee mm-hmm. and then we went to starbucks he got me a coffee and then he got a cold brew what so he was then he was drinking a cold brew during that as well and i was like this is crazy that's not yeah if you drink but, and he was like ch- chill he was like so chill <laughs> <laughs> i don't know so relaxed his heart isn't <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they like uh, neuroscientists say that if you drink coffee after I think like one or two p.m., like at like it, you're already like hurting your brain. Like that's because it affects your sleep later. Right, right. So they're saying like don't even drink coffee past like basically noon. I know. That, I think that is like usually, like when I was working like a normal job that had more like you know I go to an office and stuff. Like I drink one in the morning, and then I think I drink one around like one p.m. Because I, like, had to work 12-hour days, so I had to stay awake. Coffee's weird, because I remember, like, when I was a kid, and my mom would go, like, grind it in the in the grocery store, you know? The, yeah. The machine. I thought it would smell so good, but the times where I'm like, can I have a sip? I thought it was, like, so trash. Well, I was always, like, my dad, like, is a big coffee drinker. You know, yeah. like, one in the morning, one in the afternoon, like, he's got it. And also, like, my parents' coffee is so strong. <laughs> Like, I don't know how, but it's, like, way stronger than other coffee. It's Folgers X. <laughs> it's bang. Um, <laughs> it's just bang. Um, and Bang is made from beans. And I was, like, always, like, oh, dad, like, my dad's having his cup of coffee. Like, that's cute. Like, but I was, like, I'll never get to that point. Yeah, as, a kid, as a kid, you look at all these things that adults do, and you're, like, apparently adults just gain this... But you're like, that's not going to be me. They're crazy. And, I know. and then, like, there's that one day where you try coffee for the first time. You're like, hold on a minute. Yeah, literally. <laughs> this, this is kind of good. I know. College really does that, especially. I, my first job was at Starbucks when I was a senior in high school. So I wound up just drinking, like, a lot of, like, venti uh, lattes and, like, frappuccinos and shit because mm-hmm. I could and it was nothing to me. I could yeah. just make it for free. Yeah. And, um, well, mm, I wasn't supposed to be, but... <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Starbucks. But, you know. They sponsor the same podcast, too. <laughs> we would, um... The thing is, is you would have to throw away the food every night. Mm-hmm. And, uh... It... So much of it was not actually expired. Dang. So we would just give bags and bags of food away to like people oh, in the nice. drive through and yeah. like homeless people and stuff. That's amazing. Yeah, we weren't supposed to be doing that at all, but it was just kind of like, it, yeah, you why, can't like why, why throw just it throw it away? away. Yeah, why throw, totally. And that's the sort of thing that like somebody might even get like sued over. Hopefully not me, but <laughs> 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 this is all a story. This is fictional. This is f- fictional events. Yeah, 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 but like when we, yeah. 
I remember uh, one night we like wound up making like pink whipped cream by putting like strawberry in it, and mm-hmm. when people came through and they asked for whipped cream, we were like, "Would you like to try uh, strawberry?" As long as you don't tell anybody about it. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, that sounds that sounds fun. Yeah, honestly, like when I had my first job, it was it was pretty easy to complain, but all things considered, doing these like little like night four or five hour shifts as a 17 year old with these like random people down in south phoenix it was really fun it was fun yeah 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 that's awesome i used to like um i used to umpire little kids games every once in a while you were the umpire i would umpire them every once in a while to make money um because i played (laughs) softball okay so i was like yeah this is fun and it was really it was cute vibe (laughs) um and then i worked at like my mom's like realty office for a little bit and that was, like, easy and just, like, fun. I do my homework, you yeah. know, like, at the office. Was there ever, like, a kid fight you had to, like, interview? <laughs> <laughs> no. But one time, like, I didn't call, like, a like a pitch a strike. Uh-huh. And it was, like, it probably should have been a strike. And, like, one of the parents got so mad at me. They were, like, they're just kids. And I was, like, well, be better. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait, well, wait, wait. It wasn't a strike, so you were calling it, like, a ball? Yeah. So, so you were, well, the, as far as the other parents are concerned, you're doing a solid. I know, but the other, but one of the, it was like the coach, you know, that was a parent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were like, what was wrong with that? And I, I was like, <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I did, I did a little league until I was 11. Mm-hmm. And I always, I, I was always really good at, at like catching balls. So I wound up going from like outfield to first uh, base, but I, I never was good at like hitting or anything like mm-hmm. that. But it was, it was pretty fun. I was trash at every other sport. I Yeah, no, I played softball and volleyball all the way through high school. I did, like, club. Were you on, like, the high school sports team? I was, like, Whoa. varsity girl. Varsity. Whoa, I didn't know I was <laughs> friends with varsity girl. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, those were, f- like, those were fun times. I miss, I miss the softball and volleyball. They were really fun. Yeah, I've been, uh, I was talking to Nick about maybe even doing, like, a martial art with him or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some, I know, sometimes I feel like I, like, need to get back into a sport, just, like, yeah. you know, it's something to do. Um, me, and, yeah, me and Raina talked about doing volleyball, I think. I think it would just be fun to go, like, do something yeah. with, like, a friend. I, I don't know, we, we don't have enough, like, excuses to, like, go outside and, like, be with, like, groups of people, mm-hmm. I think, as adults now, so... Totally. I always like wanted to be those that that person that did like uh, college, you yeah, know, the college sports. I was but. extremely resistant to anything group organized ever since I was like five years old. <laughs> like I just like we didn't grow up religious, and I just anything where it was like an adult telling me to do something that I wouldn't otherwise choose for myself just got really under my skin. Mm-hmm. So I just. I, I dragged my heels through everything and mm-hmm. like god bless my dad for trying but like i <laughs> like basketball i remember there was a game of basketball where like i sat the bench the entire game and i remember being so pissed when i went home because <laughs> the only thing that would make me more mad than playing basketball was like having to show up and not play yeah, yeah because yeah. It, was, it was on saturday morning so it was basically like my dad Ooh. saying like hey next few months of school Saturday morning is for B ball, and I'm like, damn it! <laughs> I just want to play Mario Odyssey, bro. Oh, oh wait, yeah, no, wait, no, so that's funny. now, that's now. Oh. <laughs> Mario Sunshine. That's so funny. Yeah. yeah, I used to, yeah, always be in tournaments and stuff on the weekends, and there was like kind of this like weird turning point where I would like have tournaments, but I'd want to go out with my friends. Mm-hmm. So I like started like going out with my friends like the night before, and then I'd have to go to tournaments, and I was like always tired yeah always tired and i fall asleep in church i <laughs> there, I, I, mad at me. I think there was a part of me that kind of wanted to do like choir or drama or something like that in high school or even guitar class like they offered that yeah. it, it's kind of i just didn't take like risks back then anything that remotely like revolved putting myself out there i just kind of wasn't into it until junior year i took academic decathlon through senior year and then senior year I did We the People so I I started doing things that like required like preparing speeches and memorizing nice yeah and I I kind of attribute that more than anything to me like being able to talk to people now because I was the most shy person like you ever would have met yeah uh, probably until I was like 16 or so like even ordering at restaurants like made me like scared like I just didn't like it When, when kids would like volunteer to read in class I'm like 
I used I used, <laughs> no literally I used to do that, but then my senior year I started getting like really bad anxiety. Yeah. Um, and then I was like, I don't want to read. I don't. No one pick on me to read, please. No kid, one popcorn me. Kid, <laughs> popcorn. Oh my god. That that was weird. Yeah, that was weird. Why did they say popcorn? Popcorn reading. I would. I was really angsty as a kid. Like I would just get like mad at things. I I would get mad at things that didn't make sense. Yeah. So like I remember like. I, I re- like I would like get really mad if someone said like brownie points. I'm like just say points. <laughs> <laughs> That's me with the word interesting. Interesting. I hate that word. Interesting is when someone didn't actually watch what you made. <laughs> yes. Oh my god. My, no. My I was just saying this. My parents all the time will be like, "Oh, your work. It's interesting." In- like you know. Interesting just means like. Nothing. It literally doesn't mean anything. It means they're hiding something, <laughs> if we're being frank. It's like a completely filler word. You get a little bit. Yeah. Sorry, I feel just, like I'm just so scoot, close to scoot it. the chair. Interesting. Sorry. Interesting. Uh, well, you don't got... Well, that, no, that, that's equally bad. Interesting. Um, yeah, I don't like that word. That's... Um, like, it's just like a random filler word. Yeah. Like, like I'm saying like all the time right now, but um, it's, we're, we probably, it's like like or literally or... That... I should work on that <laughs> because I, I think I went, I, I like, mo- well, okay. <laughs> Wait, no, that, that's, <laughs> an, that's an appropriate We're use like of every word. single word you say, that's you can't, an appropriate you use can't of the word say like. anymore. Yeah. I, um, like a lot of kids, like I, I would get, <laughs> <laughs> you're, like, you're, you're saying it all the time now. I would get really mad at the kid who would say like too much in class, you know, when they're, uh, giving and <laughs> present and like present- a speech yeah like a powerpoint or something they, they, dylan says like a lot mm-hmm. but i think to an extent i still was fine with it like no mom everybody you, you know like you kind of just write things off as not being that big of a deal because i'm a kid and i know what the new world is like so shut up yeah. <laughs> but then you hear people that don't use filler words at all and they sound so smart yeah <laughs> Well, it's just like, just, especially with interesting mm-hmm. in this case, like, I think we could just like take a little bit more time to actually just say what we think is interesting about yeah. it, whether that's negative or a positive thing. But, well, interesting is kind of saying it made me think, but any, any reaction is making you think. Yeah, so if, it's, it's, so if yes. it's coming from a place of someone not liking it, then that's where they're like, Maybe what they thought was this is boring or I don't get it. And those are two things that maybe you could discuss with the person. Mm-hmm. Or maybe you could be like, what were you trying to do? Well, my Honestly, well, my, I would rather that though. When my mom, when my parents are like watching Beta mm-hmm. and they're like, that was so interesting. What you did was so interesting. I'm like, what the f- do you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like. How, have you, how often do you do that to other people though? I tr- I try never to do that, but I I know what you're saying. I I'm, do too, but every now and again, I feel like I have to. Yeah. <laughs> now now like, I literally someone... can't say that to anyone. <laughs> um, well, no, people just know, like where you watch something. Na- yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> I'm just gonna send an address really quick, but you can keep talking. Who, who the f- are you texting? I'm gonna have DJ on the podcast right after this. Oh shit! Yeah, you're like, like double booking. Yeah, right we're now. Go- we're gonna we're gonna uh, argue about Star Wars Episode Nine, but not not really argue because he he's the Star Wars super fan. But yeah. like, I we're, I we're, wish I could jump in on that, but I cannot. I mean, you can you can stay here. You can observe. I but I haven't even seen it. Oh, so we're just gonna ruin the whole thing. Yeah, I was like, I can't be here. Um. Anyways, yeah, interesting. Yeah, at a. Do you wish you got more negative feedback? <laughs> I'm not yes, saying for me. <laughs> I do. No, I do actually because I feel like a lot of times people are just like, "Oh, your work is so good," and I was like, "Okay, it's not that good." Yeah. So can you just like tell me what? I, don't know. I had a I had a guy comment on one of my videos on Vimeo once, and he was like, "I think he I think he prefaced with like a very half-assed like compliment or two, mm-hmm. but then he just was like." But come on, man! The shaky cam, the the frantic cuts, the, the and he was just that's kind of dope. It was, but I remember every problem he had with it were the things I did the most intentionally. Oh. So I remember, I remember, I was like mad because I was just like, he doesn't get it. But then it's like, 
okay, how do I get my point across even clearer? Yeah, no, You know, for someone's sure. really not understanding it. Because, yeah. like, someone who doesn't know what you're going for, you know... Yeah, yeah, yeah. ...is the best... The best I, uh, you can get. Yeah, no, I... I uh, the th- thing about me is, like, I just try really hard to understand, so I feel like I wind up a- asking more questions than most people, mm-hmm. which some people have less patience for, and they wind up getting mad at me. But, like, if somebody's... get uh, be- be- For, like, beating a dead horse, frankly... Or maybe seeming like I'm trying to win too much, which I which I'm working on. But like when when people give me feedback, if if I'm, I kind of tend to counterpoint them a lot, or at least explain where I'm coming from. Mm-hmm. And it's not to like win because I I'm keenly aware that I made something and they're having a reaction to it. I did not necessarily intend. Yeah. But it's more so to like just get even more articulate out of, them. out of them. Totally. Because the same thing, it's like if I'm like prepping, a, I, I remember uh, me and Q were trying to figure out how to light a party scene once and he was telling me um, his plan versus my plan. Mm-hmm. And I had like a million different like, oh, well, what if and what if and what if? And I remember he, he eventually was like, fine, Zane, you win. Like he, he, was, he was tapping out. I remember telling him like, no, like I want... I want to do the better plan. Right now, I still think that's mine because I have all these questions. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, if I run out of questions, then you're the then you're you know what I mean. Like yeah. I'm I'm just I'm just bringing up the things that I am thinking. Yeah, no, you, totally. Um, and and I I think with like negative feedback, like it, people don't want to engage in that like at all because it's it's weird. Yeah, I think. Um, there was, like, one class I had where the professor made us um, show our, like, rough drafts of our fil- of our films. And, like, we couldn't say anything. Mm-hmm. We just had to, like, listen to what people said. Like, super basic, obviously. Yeah. But um, it was, like, the best because, like, I wanted to respond so bad and be like, oh, well, I'm doing that because of this. Mm-hmm. But it was – and I couldn't. And it was just seeing if, like, people actually understood what it was about. Or what my intentions were. Yeah, we. I don't know if we had the same teacher or not, but uh, we, we, our in our class when they did that, we had the we you had to sit in front of the class while, excuse me, the the class watched your video project. Yeah, same. You weren't allowed to look at the screen, or else you would be scorned for being. Be, she, she she would she would always be like, "You've seen your movie." <laughs> you know, because she wanted us to look at their faces to see yeah. like literally what happens when they watch your thing, which is kind of fun. Mm-hmm. And. Um, when they gave the feedback, she made the feedback givers start with good things because yeah. how are you going to listen to negative things if it's right out the gate? Totally. And then and then negative things and the, and then questions. So you weren't even so feedback people weren't even allowed to ask questions because a lot of the time that's what people want to do first be like, "Oh, how did you do this?" or "Why did you do this?" Yeah. And I, yeah, every single time somebody went to go like justify themselves, she would like like stop you. Yeah. Because she was like, it doesn't matter what you were trying to do or why you did it, because they they reacted this way. Mm-hmm. So you need to. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. That's like some of the best. You know, that's the best advice yeah. I feel like someone can get because you can have like all the intentions in the world, but if it doesn't read. Yeah. You know. I think that's one of the best things I got out of film school, just kind of learning how to give and receive feedback. Mm-hmm. And it's something I'm still working on because I, I think my tone of voice sometimes comes off as more serious than like I am intending. Yeah. So sometimes people think like I'm harsh when I, I'm not trying to be at all. Uh, but yeah, st- starting with good things, being kind of constructive, not really asking questions till it's necessary, just, just stuff like that. It's important. I wish like more people would criticize me. I feel like <laughs> I <laughs> I need criticism friends. Yeah. Come at me. I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> Come at me right now. <laughs> well, I, I, I think um I think it's easier for people when like <clears throat> when you reach out to other people and you're like, Hey, can you look at my work really quick? You know? Because uh Anytime I'm editing something, I usually show it to a handful yeah, of people same. before it's finished just to yeah. see what people think. But there's kind of a temptation not to do that. It, yeah, I totally, it could go either way, kind of, because you want to like stay true to, I guess, what you think. Yeah. But also it's good to get what's, a second look. What's the weirdest thing someone said to you about your movie Beta, now on Amazon Prime? It's interesting. <laughs> no, okay, besides, <laughs> besides that. Uh, besides my parents telling me that. Um... That's a good question. A lot, like a lot of people 
said good things about it, Mm -hmm. which was good. But what did someone say that was weird? Or just like a comment or a note or even a compliment or something where you were just like, oh. Because I feel like somebody always says something. I know. I never would have. I'm really trying to think about the comments now. Um... When I did uh, my capstone, which is like very clearly about the friendship between a guy and a dog, the movie is prefaced by this like breakup that he has where he was like, co- she, she actually gave him the dog, you know? Mm-hmm. And that, that's just kind of to like emotionally set the tone that this dude's like alone and like these two are best buds, but it's like not important, you know? Yeah. And, uh... I remember having a teacher give me feedback and like in his review, it, it was anonymous, but I could figure out who it was mm-hmm. just based on like the way that they wrote it. Yeah. And I remember they said something like, I gotta say the whole time I thought this movie was going to be about him and the girlfriend and them getting back together. But by the time the credits roll, <laughs> like he watched the whole movie like wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like, think, like he is one in like hu- like hundreds of people that have never. I think actually a lot of the professors watched, not beta wrong, but there was like some things with playing playing with fire. Yeah, where some people were just like, or I got like review cards back from like this one festival. And we we probably sound pretentious right now saying somebody <laughs> I watched our art wrong, but like what I what I mean by that is sometimes people just give you a note where you're like, no, you're the outlier. Nobody nobody else has ever thought this. I remember someone was like, very MTV of you, and I was like, whoa, <laughs> whoa, <laughs> I whoa. Was like, whoa. That's, like, kind of, that's kind of a flex. <laughs> well, I mean, I think they meant it like uh, negatively. Yeah. <laughs> MT- and I was like, oh shit. MTV is usually the butt of the joke, not like the front of a compliment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I guess. Um, <laughs> but yeah, some, what, I think some of my, the professors too were like, I don't get it. Like there's just this whole thing where like some people just don't get it. Yeah. What you're going for. But, and that was like a really big thing that I was like really scared of. Like me and Caitlin were really scared of that. And our first couple of drafts, like it didn't make sense at all. <laughs> professor, professor, uh, Mede was like, no, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> he sure was like, no. That dude is like my favorite old man. I know, same. He's crazy. He he was friends with like Frank Sinatra. <laughs> <laughs> he was like a straight up executive. Yeah, and he got fired for like speaking his mind. I know. Yeah. He like he... worked for HBO and he like, didn't <laughs> like the guy. So he like quit. One time I saw him across the street and he was wearing like a new Scalamander style like <laughs> like suit with like with like a like a hat with like I a cap. Him. And he was holding what I thought was a briefcase and when I passed him I realized it was a gallon of Arizona iced tea. <laughs> what? No way. <laughs> he was just holding it by the it made no sense. <laughs> yeah, he used to just like throw shit at me and Caitlin. He was like, this isn't going to make sense unless you work on this. And we were like, it's okay. Well, yeah, I really, you you made my favorite movie at ASU. I really like it. And what's cool about it, <laughs> what's cool about it is it's, um, it's, it's like, well, it's not non-linear, it's linear, but like, it's very, uh, I don't know. Just the script is like different, but it makes complete sense. Like it, it like I can't. Is it interesting? No, <laughs> it's riveting. <laughs> like when it ends, like it completely makes sense. Like all the beats hit. It like has a lot of feelings, a lot of good moments and stuff. But like I like I couldn't even think of an ab- adjective there a second ago. That's good. Yeah, so I, I think you did it. <laughs> I'm really happy with it. Me and Caitlin are really happy with it. Do you want to direct more short films? Yes. Do you have anything you're uh, cooking? I do. I don't. I haven't started the script yet, but mm-hmm. I've started working an idea around in my head. Nice. That I want to shoot um, in my parents' backyard. Ooh, how how long would it be? I I would want it to be shorter than beta, so I think I'd want it to be like five to seven minutes. I uh, I've been in the mood to write, but for like two years, I <laughs> and I you. and I just keep not doing it. But I f- I feel like it wasn't even this last January, but maybe like the one before it, like twenty eighteen or seventeen yeah. or something like that, where I just like started to like feel like kind of comfortable with like where my life was at and it was giving me kind of just some good vibes I was just like I think I could write something off of this and like I just never really sat down to like galvanize something but I I I, want to direct something sometime soon yeah um it's fun dude making movies I know we love it we'd love to see it I will say like now that I've had the opportunity to read some really good scripts Mm -hmm. like 
I just want to write a really good script. Like, um, I well, will... I'm, the only thing I'm worse at than writing is, like, producing. Oh, I could never produce. I'm not... And if I have to do it, like, because I have a bad producer yeah. on a project, like, I feel like it's, like, a fail. I get, I get the job done because I have to a lot of the time when I produce my own stuff. Like, I'm not completely incompetent, but, like, I don't enjoy it at all. And those are usually the things I do the worst at because mm-hmm. it's just... I'm just like, man gotta call a bunch of people and make spreadsheets and go investigate and do money math they do like ultimately like when you get higher up though they do like hold the cards yeah or at least like executive producers producer well producers are super important executive producers are like money people that yeah but they but they i mean they call the shots no i know that's that's what i'm saying but but they like all, if they don't like something it's gone. But they also don't do anything. Yes, that is true. Well, I, I don't know. I'm talking out of my ass right now. But like <laughs> <laughs> from from what I've heard, a lot of, do, a okay, lot wait. of them don't do stuff. I do want to track back to Professor Mayday. Yeah, Mayday. Yeah, though. sorry. Um, because when I first took his screenwriting class, you know, he's always like, you know, when you're writing dialogue, you can you can write it however you want, however the character would speak. But when you're writing your action lines and stuff, it has to be like perfect grammar. Mm-hmm. And like I would always think about that, and then when I worked on Broad City, I was reading the scripts, and I was like, they would write in things like, Alana is sad face, like yeah. literal sad face, or yeah. Alana is like SMH. No, I get what you're saying. And I was like, shit, don't matter. Like yeah. write your script however you want. N- yeah, that's the thing. I think like the older people in film that are teaching us, they have tons and tons of like good information and honestly more than anything context for us on like how things work and like good practices. And there's good reason for a lot of these things. Yeah. Because if you're like writing a scene and you say so and so is sad, well there's like a billion different versions of what like what does that mean? Yeah. Like what does sad mean? Yeah. So they want you to be like literal and write in good grammar so it's like really easy to understand. But it's kind of one of those things where like you're like, how do I make a resume? And then they tell you, just make sure it's readable. At the end of the day, in day like function is all that's important. Yeah. So like, there's a lot of like modern things right now that are just kicking like old rules to the curb, yeah. and for good reason. So like with scripts, like I've seen so much from like young filmmakers where they're like, it, it doesn't matter. You can you can experiment with Literally, format. I just like loved the way they would write. Yeah, and all, <laughs> and also for like I, I mean. If you were having, like, Betty White read your script, you probably wouldn't put that her character is sad face because she wouldn't know what that meant. Yeah. But, you know, but, like, in the context of Broad City, like, that's out, that honestly yeah. gets the point across better than, like, writing out some action. Right. Because usually that's, like, the challenge where you have to write, like, they do this and, like, that's whatever the action is. That's, like, how you represent the emotion because they're like, you got to have them do something. Yeah. But just putting Alana is sad face like that, or is SMH like like. That's a perfect description. Yeah, it's perfect. You know what it's You know what they're gonna do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So when I came back and I like finished writing Beta, I would I would I like wrote in that same way. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, B understood it, so that's mm-hmm. all that matters. Yeah, I. Uh... No, I just. <clears throat> I think that's one of those things where I have so many thoughts on the on the subject I don't even really know what to say. <laughs> Just because I get frustrated by unnecessary rules. And so this segment is called We Don't Know Shit About Script Writing. Well, I mean, we End segment. I mean, we went to school for it, but it's not <laughs> yeah. like we do it like super professionally yet, but it's just, you know. No, totally. Because like, for instance, like Adobe, okay, so like Adobe makes Premiere and After Effects and it's so good and David Fincher made the first mainstream, like big, big, like Hollywood movie to like be edited in it. Mm. And it's replacing like Avid, which is the same company that makes Pro Tools, which is like the standard for recording music. So they kind of have the stranglehold over yeah. editing media. Avid, frankly, sucks. Yeah, so I've heard. Never it, used it. it. I hate it a lot, and if you're good at it, that's fine. And if you have the laundry list of why it's better, like sh- that, that's totally cool. But like mm-hmm. for just innate learning, like I just think it sucks. And I remember like we had a teacher who like he was so stuck in his ways of like how things were mm-hmm. that when we would raise our hands with counterpoints, he would just literally make stuff up to win the argument. In- <laughs> instead of like he, like listening to what we had to say yeah. and updating his opinion. Yeah. So like I remember when we brought up like Gone Girl, and this was like the year it was coming out or the year after, he just said like, he basically like said it's fake news. He, he literally was like, oh no, that's like clickbait. They're trying to get attention by being edgy. And we're like, do you, 
What? That doesn't even make sense. How are you going to bring traction to your movie by using a different editing software? Yeah, like that's not what? how that's, that's not like, how people think. That's not how people. It, <laughs> no. <laughs> and I remember he would like also tell us how like LEDs weren't powerful enough to be used in professional ways, but then he would show us all these clips of House of Cards, and House of Cards, to my understanding, is like lit like primarily with LEDs, mm -hmm. or at least like or, or at least like other David Fincher stuff. Like, we would show him, like, hey, look at all the, like, Ex Machina or Arrival, like, yeah, all these yeah, LED yeah. movies. And he's just like, no, <laughs> not real. That's, that's uh, silly. <laughs> it was very silly. That's what you would call silly. Yeah, so there were good and bad things out of film school, for oh, sure. Oh, for sure. I think, the best, I think the most, like, I got out of it, honestly, was just being in an environment of, like, like-minded individuals. Yeah, friends. Yeah, friend. friends. Yeah, yeah, And yeah, that wasn't even, word. like, necessarily for, from film school for me. It was from SCS. Yeah, SES. In my case, you know, like that's where I made all my friends. Yeah, that's where we met. Exactly. We were coworkers. Exactly. <laughs> on on the clock, on the grind. I know. We were hustling. We were oh. making these videos. That we was, were uh... we were working the switchboard. <laughs> um, I miss that second studio. I like those like those days were really fun. Yeah, we were uh, doing like black magic, like live switching stuff yeah. i never took the time to learn it i know and i still and don't Josh, like owned that shit yeah we I like created we were gonna create a whole manual and, i like... still don't know how to do it <laughs> something i want to start getting better at is like not falling to the back in group situations <laughs> because sometimes sometimes it's like oh they're gonna learn it so it's fine but i'm like no i need to be the one that learns this i feel like where where were you that was like during the summer and I feel like for some reason, did you work the same schedule as us? Maybe not all the, Maybe you did sometimes. I remember being alone, like, tons of my shifts. I think you might have worked a slightly different schedule than us sometimes. There was this one shift I had, just so people listening know, like, we worked in on ASU's campus in, the in like, the basement basement of, like, one of the oldest buildings there, and not in a nice way. Like, it was gross <laughs> and scary. There was this one night I was down there, and I was, um, I had, like, a late night shift for, for no reason. Like, we had, like, nothing to do, but, like, yeah. he, he started giving us minimum hours so we could... Which was kind of nice of him because we get paid yeah. more, but... Because before we were working, like, by demand, and sometimes I would get two-hour weeks. So in college, there were, there were months where I would get two $40 paychecks. Yeah. Like, I, I would make, like, $80 a month sometimes. Yeah. So I had to, like, do side gigs so to even enough. pay for, like, living. Yeah. But then he started giving us uh, minimum hours, and I remember I was down in the basement once, and I was watching the playtest episode of Black Mirror. <laughs> oh my god! The video game the, one, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is largely that about one's a great one. Yeah, which is largely about being afraid when you're alone and like hallucinating and <laughs> <Yeah>. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and it freaked me out so much because I was in this like you scary the, ass basement. That's the worst. I wound up going upstairs to use the bathroom and like the lights oh, were all flickering. No, I would not. And there were cockroaches in the bathroom. I would not. So, yeah, I hated it. And I came back downstairs to like get my stuff because I'm like, I'm not working on anything. This is stupid. I'm going home. I'm going to clock out. Yeah. I open the door and the new guy is just in the doorway standing there. And I scared. The new guy? There was a new guy. And I screamed. At SES? Yeah. He, Who the fuck was he? I don't know. He, he's probably one of your friends, but I don't know. <laughs> but he. Enrique? It doesn't matter. Jacob Coffin? I screamed like none of them. I screamed louder than like I've ever screamed in front of another person. <laughs> and he just like didn't even blink, which made it worse. You're like, and he was just like, real? he's like, what's up, dude? I'm here for my shift. And I was just like, oh, okay, I'm going to leave now. <laughs> Um, yeah, the, I was there a couple late nights too, but like working on shit. Mm -hmm. Cause I, I, I don't know if I can say this on air, <laughs> but I would, I would like go into the building late at night after it was closed to like, cause we had like good computers and I could edit on things on yeah. there and stuff. And there was like one night I was there till like 2 AM. It was mm -hmm. like so late. And it was, like, so scary. I would, like, only stay in that room. I would, like, lock, keep the door locked. Yeah, And yeah, I would, yeah. like, work. And then I would, like, run out of the back door yeah. when it was time to leave. I would do things like that, too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like being alone. And when, it, when it's, like, late night mm -hmm. in public, I'm and like, that, ah. And there was, like, squatters in that building. Oh, which yeah. Which is the craziest shit. Like, yeah, no, they found out that there was a married couple, like, living in whoa, there. Whoa, a married couple? Yeah, they were living in the building. Like, on, like, the fourth floor or something. They, no they would, there. no, they would periodic, what they would do is they would figure out everybody's schedules and move floors based on time of it's day. It's insane, yeah. yeah. So there was, like, definitely people there. 
There was also a firefighter that died in a fire in the stairwell. Oh, which one? The one that we used. The the one that's like that's I always got bad energy in that stairwell. Mm-hmm. I'm not even joking. I always got the, bad the, energy the, the in that ins- stairwell. The inside one. Yeah, the one that you have to like open the door and you go down. A firefighter by the bathroom. burned to death in there. I always got weird energy in that stairwell. I'm not even joking. I would like run through that stairwell whenever I used it. You want the final one? The original actual puppet no from, what, are you, from what the, the fuck are you saying from the first saw movie shut the fuck up i don't want to hear it has, i don't want to hear it has been in scs i don't want to fucking hear that the filmmaker who made saw like made it as like an indie movie uh-huh, i believe uh-huh. and he was like doing like a college radio tour with the puppet to like say hey go see my new movie and so, like, he went... So, in SES's basement used to be, like, a public access news station. Mm-hmm. And he did an interview down there with it. So, like, <laughs> we definitely worked in a haunted space. 100%. While Mercury was in retrograde. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that. So the Saw movies... Well, okay, so the Saw movies were, like... I'm not a huge fan of scary movies. Like I'm not either, not because they're not good, but because I absorb feelings yeah, extremely easily and I don't like how they make me feel. I like I at the time I like watching them, but then I like can't fall asleep and shit and I just like don't feel good. But um the Saw movies were one of those ones that were like, okay, I can watch this because it's like it's like gore rather than just like like haunted shit. Yeah. Like, haunted shit, like, really makes me scared. Wait, you're more fine with gore? Yeah, Oh, sometimes. I'm the exact... Sometimes op- I'm more okay with gore just because it's, like, shit happening to people, but it's not, like, something, like, haunting someone. I'm the exact opposite. <laughs> like... You can do, like, ghost things, but not... Yeah, ghost things are just, like, cartoons and fairy tales to me. Like, it just... I, yeah. It doesn't affect me. Re- re- like, body mutilation in any way, shape, or form, like, like it... it it gets under my skin more than anything in the yeah. world. Like I can't like the, the movie hereditary I think is a perfect 10 out of 10 movie, but I, I literally wish I didn't see it because there's like stuff in that movie that like my photographic memory, like yeah. just can't get rid of. And it made me feel that bad. That one has like a little bit of both too. Yeah, it has both. It so, has both. Yeah. It not not have. saying that the other stuff doesn't like freak me out at all, but like it's in general fine. If anything, I use it as a way to feel better uh-huh. because I'm, you know, you're like, this is fake. Um, but so anyway, so I, like there was this like one day randomly where I was like, you know what? The Saw movies are, movies are playing. Like I'm going to watch them. And it was just like a Sunday afternoon or something. I started watching them and I like watched one and I was like, yeah, I could do this. Like, <laughs> let's watch another one. And I started watching the other, the second one and I was just like, oh, this is starting, this is starting to get weird. Like it's starting to make me feel weird. No, I, I don't so, like it. Yeah. Have you seen Green Room? Um, I've seen part of it. Which is like really annoying. It's but really, really. Have you seen the first gory part in it? No, I don't think so. This I is must have not. this is like a minor spoiler. But no, it's, don't tell me. No, it's not even. It's what not a. It's it? not a plot thing. What if I watch it? All right, fine. I won't say it. <laughs> I know it's on. I think it's on Amazon still. I should watch it. It it, it was just relating to the level of like violence that it is. That's all. But I won't say. Yeah. But like, yeah, that. Uh, that movie's very good. <laughs> like if, if this if that if the puppet was to like bike in here right now. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> let, let, let me clar- <laughs> let me clarify. Actually, I have a deep fear. I shouldn't even be saying this, but I have a deep fear of like animatronics and puppets <laughs> and thing. Anything like like I find I find campy looking things to be scarier. Yeah. Like when I was a kid, I was afraid of like that Nickelodeon show, Mr. Meaty. It would give me nightmares. Mm. I didn't watch that one. It was puppets. It was really freaky All looking puppets. though. Yeah, and like if if I went to my neighborhood didn't have Peter Piper, we had a uh, Pepe's. But if you went to Pepe's and it had that like animatronic band, Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah, shit like that's like freaky to me. Yeah. People in like totally. big like mascot suits because like more fantastical looking things. That's more photo real, you know, in a way. To mm-hmm. me, it's like faker. But when it's stuff like that, where yeah, it, that's like the uncanny. It's in the uncanny Maybe valley yeah. where it's like it has life, but it looks like it shouldn't. Yeah, and I hate it. Yeah, I totally know what you mean. Um, funny story about New York and um, life size or people and <laughs> as life size 
things, you know? Life-sized people. You know what I mean? Like, a, so in Times Square, like, you know, there's, like, the Transformer people. There's, like, the light, the uh, yeah, people yeah, wearing yeah. Elmo suits. Street performers. Yes. <laughs> well, okay, so I, like, never go to Times Square. Because yeah. it's not, like, if you live in New York, you don't go there. Like, when it's, it's when gross. I visited, I didn't even see it. <laughs> yeah, it's gross. It's, it's like, it's cool to see, like, once, and then it's gross. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had to, like, go run an errand there for, like, my job. And... I like started I was like walking through Times Square there's so many people like I'm so annoyed like it's just so busy and crowded and it's like just chaotic and then all of a sudden I see like this Elmo yeah and the girl who was like in the Elmo suit she like has her her thing like lifted up she's wearing like a a um a face mask because she's like sick or something and I'm like and she like just looks me down the eye she says you want a picture you want a picture and I'm like yeah. looking at Elmo like asking me this and I'm like freaking out she was having a day literally I was like oh my god this Times Square never again yeah I think that was DJ is that DJ I think it was holy shit um at first my inclination was to go grab the door and tell him what's happening and then we wrap up and then we do his but I want to just wrap up let's fucking wrap this up alright let's wrap up alright this has been sponsored by Bang. This has been sponsored by Bang, Squarespace, uh, Starbucks, yeah. and many more to come. This this is a bit. What, what, do you, what do you have going on? You have, you have Beta on Amazon Prime. Mm-hmm. You just put out a new Breakup Shoes, shoes music video. video. Yep. We didn't even IDK. talk about that. Oh, next oh, time. Next time. Go watch it. Go watch it. Thanks, All right. Sam. All right, that's that. Bye. Bye. That was fun. I have to pee before. Yeah. <laughs>